Okay, so that's all for Ethernet. Now we will introduce the Ethernet frames. We will look at the format of the Ethernet frame. So actually one Ethernet frame uh, looks like this. We have two kind of Ethernet frames. One is Ethernet 2, another one is the IEEE L2.3. If the packet is in Ethernet 2 format, actually they include several domains. For example, they have they must include the destination MAC address and also the source MAC address and also the type. Type means what what type of data are included in the payload. So they can be the IP packet uh, from network layer. They can also be the uh, ARP packet from upper layer. And this is the user's data. And finally, there will be a checksum. So this is for the Ethernet 2. The L2.11, the L2.3 format uh, is much similar as this one. They have the destination MAC address, they have the source MAC address, and they uh, identify the length of the packet, but, all, but they have two more domains. One is the link layer control, another is the SNAP, and also it has the checksum at the tail. The length of the data frame should not be too short or too long. Uh, they should be between these numbers. Because if the length of the data frame is too short, then the length of the payload will be short, but the header cannot be reduced. In that case, the uh, overhead is the same, but the over the, the payload is small, so the efficiency for the transmission will be lower. And also the length of the data frame should not be too short. That is because we want to prevent the case of the following. For example, if the sender send out a packet and finished sending the packet and the receiver haven't start receive the first bit, then the receiver may have high probability to transmit its own package. In that case, these two packages may have high probability to collide with each other in the uh, media. So, so that will reduce the network's efficiency. Because of the two reasons, the data uh, length, the frame length of the Ethernet cannot be too short. And also, the data length cannot be too long, because if we make the frame length to be too long, then they will have much more probability to be collided with the other nodes. In that case, the successful transmission rate of this frame will be reduced, and the total performance will also degrade it. Now let's look at the MAC address. Actually, Ethernet is a link layer protocol, and the switch transmit and forward package according to the MAC address. So what is MAC address? What is the difference between IP address and what's the function of it? There, there is a question, so we will explain all these questions here. First, you need to know MAC address is the media access control address. This MAC address actually uniquely identifies a network interface card on the network or identifies an interface on the network. So you can think of this MAC address as the ID card number of our human people. So the when the uh, network interface card brought, manufactured in the factory, actually the factory has already been uh, re, has already write a uh, MAC address into this device. And then this MAC address cannot be changed in their life. So this is the MAC address. So there will be a very straightforward question. So what's the difference between IP address and MAC address? We have already got an IP address in the network layer. Then why do we bother have this MAC address here. So first, let's compare the fact, uh, characteristic of these two addresses. So if we look at the IP address, actually 
um, they are unique. Yeah, this is the same, right? So both IP address and MAC address are unique, unique all over the world. But the IP address, actually, they can be changeable. If you move from one network to another network, then the IP address is changed because the IP address actually is allocated by one network and they must be allocated a, a IP address within this network's IP range. So if they move to another network, then they should change to another IP address. And the, this IP address actually is assigned uh, based on the network topology. So you can think of the IP address as the postal, as the address of your of a human being, uh, as your living address, as your uh, mail address, as your postal code of your of a human being. They can be changed. They tells you where you are. And uh, in contrast, actually, MAC address cannot be changed. They are fixed from as born. So you can think of that as your ID number, and they cannot be changed. And they are assigned actually based on the manufacturer, and they are totally different. So if we are looking at one network, if you can find that the IP address are very similar, the first part are the same. But if we look at the MAC address, they are very different. The uh, 46 bit can be all different with each other. And actually, the IP address is based on the network topology. There will be one question. Can we only use one address? For example, can we only have this MAC address? And there is no IP address in the world. So if in that case, actually, there is a very severe problem. So think of that. One each each router will have a routing table, and in the routing table, there are a lot of entries. Each entry identifies to which that to this destination how you forward the packet to, and then if the there is no IP address or a MAC address, then the routing table in one router will be very, very large. They need to list all the uh, MAC addresses all over the world, so it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And another a problem is that if uh, one host is moved from one network to another network, actually uh, a new IP address can be assigned to the IP host with no need to replacing the network interface card with a new one, right? This two-layer addressing architecture actually is more flexible and easy to maintain. So for example, if an Ethernet network interface card is 40, this one is 40, and you can easily replace it without changing its IP address. Right. They can still have this IP address, but you change for another network interface card. And also, if this PC has moved to another uh, place, then you can allocate a new IP address to it, but you don't need to change its MAC address. So you don't need to replace the network interface card uh, from using another one. That's the benefit of this two-layer A address. So uh, in conclusion, actually, an uh, IP address can identify a network node that identifies a node in a network, and data on different network segments can be accessed using IP address. But MAC address can uniquely identify a network interface card, so data on a single network segment can be accessed using MAC address. Okay, now let's look at what's the format of the MAC address. So actually, MAC address has 48 bit, so they have six bytes in length. It looks like this. And you can also write them into the decimal dotted or decimal slash format. And the MAC address can also be divided into two parts. 
Actually, the first part is OUI, which is Organizationally Unique Identifier. This identifier actually is got by the company. So one company, one manufacturer will have one OUI queried or achieved from the global organization. And then the second part, we call it the CID, which is the uh, ID in the company that is allocated by the company. So the manufacturer uh, from different network interface card from one manufacturer will have the same OUI, but have different CID. That is for the unicast MAC address. Uh, similar as the IP address, actually MAC address can also provide this multicast MAC address and broadcast MAC address. So for multicast MAC address, the eighth bit actually is one. And unicast actually have zero in the eighth bit. And uh, if we want to uh, identify a broadcast MAC address, you need simply put all the bits to be one. Then that is the broadcasting MAC address. Okay, this one is uh, widely used in our in a lot of protocols when you doesn't know the destination's MAC address. Okay, so now let's look at the unicast Ethernet frame. So this is a typical unicast Ethernet frame. The frame can be transmitted from one host. Then all the other nodes can overhear this frame. And then they will compare their own MAC address with this destination MAC address. If it is for this host, it, if it is same, then they will transmit up to the upper layer. For example, host B find it is for him, then they will, it will transmit the frame into the network layer of this host. But if it's different, it means it's not for me, then I will discard it. Now let's look at the broadcast Ethernet frame. The broadcast Ethernet frame is all F MAC address. When a host receives such a MAC address packet, actually they will send this packet up to its up layer. So they will think that, yeah, this is broadcast, so I should receive it and I should forward it to my upper layer. So all the hosts in one network will receive this broadcast frame. And how about for multicast Ethernet frame? Actually, the destination of the MAC address of a multicast frame will have a unique MAC address. They will have a MAC address with the eighth bit set to be one. And for example, if this is a MAC address, then they will identify, uh, they will tell us, okay, I am going to host B and host D. They are in my multicast group. Then these two hosts will receive this packet, but this host will discard this packet. 